So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Gianluca Masi is speaking from the Virtual Telescope Project and it's such a big pressure for me to be here tonight when Comet Virt Virtanen is actually having its flyby with the Earth. We have been waiting for this for a long time and uh, just a few hours ago this very nice comet had its flyby, reached its minimum distance from us. As you know, the Virtual Telescope Project scheduled a couple of live online observing sessions, but unfortunately we had to face bad weather, you know. Bad weather is always an issue when you are planning astronomical observations. And uh, our previous attempt a few days ago was impossible because of the clouds. And I must say that even tonight, the weather is terrible at the observatory location in central Italy. So even tonight, we are not going to see the comet live, unfortunately. But while I'm ready to show you some images we collected with our telescopes the, the night this uh, night before, I also want to tell you that we will try again to observe Comet Wirtanen live in a couple of days. And our next live feed online, of course, will be on uh, uh, 18 of December, so two days by now, but I will be able to remind you about this later and also on our website, just to be sure that we will be able hopefully to see this comet in real time and I, I have seen that in a couple of days the, the weather should be better. We never know at winter, but at least forecast seems to be quite good for two days by now. Anyway, here we are and I'm pleased to share with you what we have seen on this comet with this comet in the past nights through the Virtual Telescope project. And uh, as you know, we've been waiting for this comet for quite a lot of time. And this is me just uh, beside the telescope I used to observe Comet Wirtanen over the last few weeks. And uh, what is really nice here is that Comet Wirtanen reached the maximum brightness, the best of its visibility, exactly at Christmas. <laughs> that is the best period of the year, I think, for a comet to show, because there is a, such a strong connection between Christmas season, the Christmas, Christmas period of the year, and a comet. After all, a comet is the astronomical symbol of the Christmas. And at some point, we will also tell in the future, maybe we will have an event about this to tell you why a comet is such a beautiful, important symbol of Christmas. Anyway, this here, as it happens from time to time, we have a real comet up there, just crossing the sky, just surfing across the stars in this very moment of the year. And Comet Wirtanen is just one of those objects. And uh, while I am speaking, actually uh, this has been true for about a couple of weeks now, this comet is also visible uh, to the naked eye, provided you, believe you live in a very nice place far from the city, I mean, away from the light pollution, which is the first, the biggest enemy of any kind of astronomical observation, and in particular, cometary observations. In, if, you, if you live in a rural place far from the city, I mean, under a dark sky with plenty of stars, you can go out there right now and enjoy this comet with your very own highs and i will also try to show you a map where you can see where to look for the comet in the i mean the next hours because right now i mean in these very hours the comet has is shining at its best and i really think that this is perhaps the best moment for you to go out and enjoy this comet itself anyway this comet is uh, truly nice one and it was discovered uh, um, uh, by Hal van uh, Wirtanen about uh, uh, 80 years ago, it was 1948 when uh, uh, Mr. Wirtanen, an astronomer, an American astronomer, observed, actually discovered this comet from Leak Observatory. So this is of course an important comet because it, it was also selected to be the target of a very important space mission. It was the Rosetta space mission. I'm sure you know about Rosetta 
because it had a very nice mission understanding, unveiling and studying the Turin of Gerasimenko comet uh, just a few years ago, but the original target was the comet 46P Wirtanen. As I told you, this one was discovered by Carl Alvan Wirtanen in 1948 from Leak Observatory, and uh, we know that this comet has a period of 5.4 years. So this is a periodic comet just orbiting around the Sun and uh, visiting the Sun, reaching its minimum distance from the Sun that we call perihelion every five. 0.4 years. And what is great this time is that this comet has just had a very close encounter with the Earth. Well, not very close in an absolute meaning, because the distance, the minimum distance we had between the Earth and this comet was about 11.5 millions of kilometers, which is a lot. But if you look how many comets Richard, this distance, you could be surprised because Comet Wirtanen, with this flyby that it had a few hours ago, it was the 20th comet ever coming so close. So, in this sense, it made history. So, we were happy to could observe this object so close and uh, of course even so bright because while I am speaking as I say this comet is uh, easy to see by naked eye provided I underline you try to observe it from a dark place in other words if you are in a city if you live inside the light pollution of many big cities I'm pretty sure you will not see this comet with your own naked eye and perhaps you will have also problems trying with the uh, binocular or telescope because of course too much artificial light is really a huge problem for in astronomical observation but if you are away from the city you can really see this with your own eyes right now as you could you could do also over the last 10 days or so and also keep in mind that the moon is now uh, bigger and bigger because we will have the full moon in a few days and of course the full moon is going to flood the entire sky with its light so I want to say that the next the very next nights will be perhaps the worst so you have a couple of days if you still want to see this comet with your own eyes or have the best experience with your own telescopes, binoculars, whatever, but then we will have the full moon and then let's wait for two, three days so the moon will move in the second part of the night after the full phase of our moon and then soon after sunset, as soon as the sky gets dark enough, you can still see this comet again before the moon sets. So in other words, try now or just wait two, two three days and for Christmas, soon after the sunset, when the sky will be dark enough, again, you can observe this comet, but at that point, it will be slowly leaving us on its orbit after greeting the Earth and after say goodbye to the sun and coming back in about five years and a half. And uh, before we go ahead, I want to thank the technological partners of the Virtual Telescope Project, and they are Unitron Italia Instruments, Software BISC, C-Web, Santa Barbara Instruments Group, Plane Wave Instruments, Bader Planetarium, and I'm very happy to acknowledge their important role as part of the Virtual Telescope Project, and I also want to thank the many international media worldwide, which made possible for a lot of people like you to learn about this opportunity offered by the Virtual Telescope Project, I mean, the opportunity to follow this comet, to join us online from the comfort of uh, your homes. That's it. I would like to show you a few images of uh, this comet as we have seen it over the last few weeks, I should say few months, friends. Here it is. A little composition where you can see how faint the comet was I mean a few months ago we started observing this comet in September and you can see in these uh, three images how the comet was faint but 
slowly increasing its brightness in about one month, starting from the upper image last September to the image on the bottom about one month later. And uh, I must say that looking at these images, it, is, uh, it was hard to imagine how bright the comet was becoming in uh, a few weeks. While we are speaking, because the comet is so close to the Earth, and by the way, as I said, the minimum distance was 11.5 millions of kilometers, they are a lot. I just want to make this clear, no risks at all of collision between the comet and the Earth. And after all, we are after the minimum distance. So if we are here, I mean, this is the best proof that this close encounter was absolutely safe. But above all, in a more absolute sense, 11.5 millions of kilometers are a huge distance, of course. Back to the comet, you could see how small, how faint, but again, how beautiful this comet was already about three months ago when at the virtual telescope we started observing it, we started just following it with our robotic telescopes. And in particular, this sequence was made with a telescope I have beside in this picture. This is one of the our best telescopes. I mean, this is the main robotic unit available as part of the virtual telescope project. And uh, after those initial observations, of course, we decided to monitor this comet. Of course, we knew this comet was preparing for the show later the same year, the, these, these very days. And uh, actually, we've been waiting since the beginning of the year, because, you know, every year, every time we are ending a an year and we are approaching a new one, we try to see what will be up in the sky in the new year. So about one year, one year ago, I was just uh, checking uh, what was going to show in the sky in the next year, that is the one we are living now. And uh, when I spotted Comet Wirtanen was going to be so nice in December of this year, right now, I was happy. And here we are, after all, to enjoy that event. And uh, a few weeks later, okay, we decided to observe the comet again. And here it is, uh, a new image of comet Wirtanen taken on uh, November the 7th, so a bit more than one month ago. And again, the comet was pretty faint, but it was also pretty difficult to observe for us living in the northern hemisphere because the comet was placed very low in the sky and uh, I mean for us living in the north so it was in a wonderful position for our friends in the southern hemisphere but here in the north we had troubles I mean we had to observe very low above the horizon when I mean the fog when some natural obstacles can make the observation quite hard. But again, the comet was there and we have been really tracking night after night, week after week, this comet while it climbed from the south to the north, becoming brighter, coming closer and being better placed in our sky. And this is how the comet show uh, appeared about uh, one month ago, a bit more than one month ago, and you can easily recognize the typical shape of a comet with the, its brightest region where the false nucleus, the so-called dirty snowball, the, that small hazy world, this comet has a diameter of, um, and, and estimated to be 1.4 kilometers in diameter, so pretty small, so a small dirty snowball orbiting around the sun and uh, after the uh, under the effect of the of the solar radiation you see the typical uh, cometary phenomenon just showing at its best this is the so-called coma you can see this very uh, diffuse and fuzzy aspect which is typical of a comet and of course week after week the the vision was better and better and here you can see a nice image we captured late in November, so 
a few weeks ago when the comet was significantly brighter than earlier the same month and again you can see this very delicate i love the i mean the shape of these comets i mean and you can see the bright nucleus there and the very delicate nebulous coma all around dust and gas released by the heart of the comet the heart of the comet i mean that uh, dirty snowball and uh, a few nights later <coughs> the vision was even better of course while the comet was approaching the sun the perihelion was december 12th and of course while it was approaching night after night the vision was better and better in other words while at the beginning you needed several days just to see the comet better and brighter when we were closer to the best moment for the comet night after night you could see improvements you could see evolution good evolution increase in brightness and also in the apparent dimension the angular sides of the coma i mean how large in the sky the comet was showing okay and this image was obtained at the beginning of this month the first of december and again you can see the typical shape of a comet i want to say that all these images are close up because our telescope is so powerful that we could concentrate on what was happening in the very inner coma just around the nucleus and i actually appreciate this possibility it is another i mean a different approach of course comets have their wonderful tails and for that you really need a huge field of view if the comet is has a very long tail but here we decided to concentrate to look closer to the nucleus to spy i mean to monitor what was happening just close to the nucleus and uh, i'm happy with what we have seen and hopefully with what we will see in the next in the next uh, days and weeks because while the comet again i repeat had its flyby with the earth a few hours ago and now it is slowly leaving us we will have a few weeks uh, we still have uh, a few weeks to explore to enjoy to see in a very good way this comet on uh, while it is leaving the sun and it's leaving the earth along its orbit again here it is another image a few days later and you can easily see how the comet improved again being brighter and of course even the coma was much better visible i really love what we saw with the telescope and of course while the comet is uh, was moving around the sun it was also moving across the stars this is why you can see many star trails okay because the telescope was actually tracking the comet while it moved across the stars this is why the stars on the background are leaving those trails and uh, the comet is on the contrary well in fox and sharp yet to imagine that all this is happening in a dynamical way and i will show you an animation making this even much more evident so the telescope tracked the comet and this is why the stars on the background are apparently leaving those long trails okay and all this on december the 7th on the 8th of december here it is what we saw again and uh, I love again the uh, the aspect, the vision, the aesthetic of the comet because I really like them. I, I'm sorry, but that is my personal opinion. Happy to underline how beautiful the comets are, and a lot of people out there think the very same. Uh, there are astronomers and uh, both professionals and amateurs that really love comets, and uh, they are taking wonderful, stunning images of comet we're stunning that you have certainly seen them on the web of course but on uh, 10 of december here it is one of the best images we collected and again i want to make sure you and you, you can recognize how the comet was increasing in brightness image after image while 
it was approaching both the sun and the earth okay and here it is comet 46p Wirtanen on December the 10th and you can I hope enjoy what the telescope saw last week basically and uh, at some point we decided to investigate a bit better what was going to happen what was happening around the nucleus and applying some digital filtering we could isolate these features just uh, resembling some jet-like features material just uh, uh, ejected uh, into the outer space during the cometary activity this is typical and uh, being this comet bright it was relatively easy to apply this kind of digital filtering to hopefully extract those features and uh, this is some kind of scientific image which is I think worth to share of course the colors you see here are just artificial ones just to make subtle differences in this uh, particular uh, image processing pre better visible and much more better better apparent friends and uh, at some point I also think that uh, we can uh, try to see an animation that I did on the same uh, night and uh, here it is what we saw the same night putting together like uh, in a time lapse the images we collected and uh, I love this because with this you can really see the comet in motion of course this is showing much faster than uh, in reality because in uh, eight seconds or so you are seeing what happened in about 30 minutes but seeing this hazy world orbiting the Sun and so apparently surfing the skies across the stars moving so slowly silently is for me a source of emotion so fascinating and I'm really happy that at least while the rain is falling all around the observatory so we were not able to observe live tonight but hopefully we will do in a couple of days at least I could show you I could share with you this video making it possible for you to observe in principle the comet in motion let me say this is not a simulation these are true images like a time lapse 80 pictures I grabbed it through the telescope I took through the telescope and uh, then they were put together to create to create this kind of uh, animation this kind of time lapse of course and then we can switch to December 11 here it is and uh, this was just before the perihelion I mean the minimum distance between the comet and our Sun and here you can see how active the comet was with a lot of dust with a lot of uh, light just uh, coming back from the Sun just uh, through the, the cloud of dust I mean reflected to us by the comet material all this material released by this tiny icy world we call comet comet 46p Wirtanen imaged just a few days ago and then I want to share with you the last image I could collect last night and I was very lucky here it is because last night as tonight the sky was completely cloudy and uh, we we had just 30 minutes of clear weather not really clear but at least clear enough for us to ask our robotic telescope to capture this image the night before the flyby between of the comet with the earth and uh, I was happy that we could succeed and happy that we can share we can show you this right now to you so hopefully I mean this way you can enjoy the comet exactly 
as uh, seen in real time because this is what we could see if the comet was available tonight for us to be seen. I'm trying also to put another thing, okay, just to be sure. So this is the last image we had we have captured last night and uh, I hope that uh, it is able to bring to you the beauty, the I mean the uh, fascinating nature of uh, this comet surfing the skies right now. I also want to tell you where the comet is uh, on uh, these very hours. Here it is. This, uh, this is a map I made thanks uh, to the Sky X Pro provided by our technological partner Software Bisc, and you can see how the comet reached the northern sky from the south night after night and uh, just tonight it is a few degrees west from the Pleiades, the amazing uh, open cluster you have in the, the Taurus constellation, the Bull, which is a very easy place to locate. So if you want to observe the comet yourself, having Pleiades there tonight is a perfect reference. So you just need a binocular or your own eyes if you are lucky enough to live far from the city lights. And if the sky is clear, just wait for the moon to set or if you can at least for the moon to be low on the western horizon so that you will limit the interference from the moon and at that point you can use the Pleiades in the bull in Taurus just to locate the comet. And you will see the comet as a, a green, uh, uh, green uh, object, little diffuse cloud, green color, this because of uh, the, the atomic carbon inside the comet and uh, of course it could be a wonderful vision so I strongly suggest you to have a look. As I said at the virtual telescope location weather has been so far very bad but uh, we really wanted to share with you what we saw in the previous nights but considering that we really want to share with you the real comet live, we scheduled another observing session. Here it is our advertisement saying that in two days, 18 December 28, starting at 22 universal time, that is the same time as tonight, we will try again. At this very moment, forecast for central Italy look reasonably good, so let's hope that the comet, Comet Wirtanen, will be happy to show to us. Anyway, we will try and uh, we will know what will happen just living, waiting and looking for it on that date. As for now, I hope that this quick uh, journey, thanks, we made thanks to some images we collected these very past nights through our telescopes was at least rewarding. Unfortunately, no one can control the weather. When we are on planet Earth, all the optical telescopes, of course, when it is cloudy, can just sleep. And uh, of course, we hoped to have uh, better skies, but unfortunately, this was not the case. So at least I hope that for you, this experience was rewarding your time and uh, your preference to stay with us for a while. Again, I want to thank our technological partners, Unitron Italia Instruments, Software BISC, C-Web, Bader Planetarium, Santa Barbara Instruments Group and Plane Web Instruments, and all the international media which featured our live feed, making possible for the world to learn about this opportunity. Unfortunately, the weather did not cooperate with us, but as you see, we did our best to bring to you the beauty of this comet. I mean, uh, the feeling, the mood. Everyone is uh, hopefully uh, 
experiencing and enjoying when a comet, a nice comet like Comet Wirtanen, surfaces the sky, especially this time of the year. That's all from Gianluca Masi, Virtual Telescope Project Italy, but again, save the date in a two days by now, 18 December, we will do another, we will have another attempt, we will try again to observe this comet live. I also want to thank everyone deciding to support the Virtual Telescope Project. As you see, we are asking uh, uh, for nothing to you. We offer all this for free, but of course running all this is not free at all. We have many costs to, I mean, to consider, to cover. So if you think that this opportunity is worth your support, please consider donating whatever you want. All people supporting us by donations are receiving some exclusive high quality images they can print and put on their walls at home in their office where they want and also they will have the opportunity to access uh, the same live event we will broadcast in a couple of days with the comet in uh, high definition this is our way uh, to say thank you to everyone uh, just uh, giving us something to keep alive this project. And so far, the Virtual Telescope Project is a truly unique um, opportunity for many people to look into the depths of the sky, the depths of space. That's all. Gianluca Masi, Virtual Telescope Project, says, uh, all, says uh, goodbye and good night, uh, good day. I don't know where you are on the planet, but anyway, all the best from the Virtual Telescope Project from Gianluca Masi and I'm looking forward to share again with you the cosmos in real time. And the next opportunity will be 18 of December, that is in 48 hours. That's all, take care and of course keep looking at the stars.